Hey everyone. So this uh, is about a program called Visor, V-Y-S-O-R. And Visor is made so that you can show your Android device uh, on your computer. And it works for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And it supposedly works in the browser. And I'm gonna show you how to set that up and also just basically what it is, what it does. So I've actually already got it running here because I need to show you a couple of things in the tablet as to how to set it up to get it working in the first place. So uh, assume that this is a tablet that's just in your hands, right? And actually what's interesting is I can control it from the touch screen here or with the mouse. So that's kind of nice too. Um, but let's say you don't know anything about any of this stuff, but you want to be able to do this. The first thing you need to do is open up settings. And uh, assuming you've never done USB debugging or developer options or any of that stuff, what you'll need to do is go to About Tablet. Uh, I think it's in here, Software Information. Now it might be in a slightly different spot for different versions of Android or for different tablets. This is a Samsung Galaxy Tab A 2019 10.1 inch. But what you wanna find is build number. And the reason is, if you tap build number seven times, it will open up the developer options and you need to get into those to make one quick change in order to enable Visor to work. So again, you're gonna to go to settings and you're gonna find software somewhere in there and you're gonna find build uh, number. Where is it? Build number. In mine, it's right here. This is uh, again, 2019 Galaxy Tab A, probably similar for all the Samsungs, but it would be different for other devices. Tap it seven times, and you'll see mine says developer mode's already been turned on, but as you're tapping, once you've tapped it, I think four times, it'll say you are three steps away, you are two steps away, you are one step away, you are a developer, or something like that. You have developer mode turned on. And then when you go back to settings, you'll find this developer options option, this extra tab in there. And there's a whole bunch of options. Let's open it up. The one that we care about is USB debugging, and you want to turn that on. And basically, this allows you to, to get lower level access to the device through USB so that you can control it with a computer. And this allows you to do a whole bunch of other stuff as well, but in this case, it allows Visor to work. And so you need USB debugging on. To turn it on, you have to open up those developer options. Once you've got that done, you're actually done with the tablet part of it. So, well, I will uh, go back to display so that I remember to change <laughs> the timing on it. But you've got your tablet. It's not hooked up or anything yet. You want to type in visor. Visor download would probably work, actually, because you might be on Mac or Linux. Yeah, visor downloads. The first thing will open up this. And you want to download the Windows version. Uh, if you got Windows, Mac for Mac, Linux for Linux. Now I've tried browser, however, it hasn't worked for me. Even if I turn this off, I get an error that tells me to retry. Now here it says if you're mirroring a device in another tab or another server is running, it might not work. Um, downloading the application is recommended. I would just ignore the browser version, but apparently you can run it from within Chrome. It hasn't worked for me, but I haven't played around with it much. So at any rate, I'm gonna cancel that. You need to download uh, the version for you, but also, uh, does it show it there? No. You'll also need the ADB driver uh, if you're using Windows. So once you go to connect it, it will tell you that you need, uh, let's see. Android not found, make sure debugging is enabled and Windows users need to install ADB drivers. Um, now, if I remember correctly, for Linux, I also needed to install the Android Debug Bridge, ADB. And that's what that stands for, Android Debug Bridge. So you've turned USB debugging on, you've installed the Android Debug Bridge, a set of drivers that gives you, your computer, access to that USB device, uh, that lower level access, and now you can actually set it up. So once you've gotten those two things, it'll look like this and this. Install them both, 
And when you run Visor for the first time, what you'll see, and I will actually close it now, what you'll see is this right here. You can have serial numbers on or off. It just shows me the serial number of my particular device. And you can do share all devices, um, which honestly I'm not sure what that does. Now there is a pro version, and if you look for the price, it's monthly. I think it's $2.50 per month. Without the pro version, I believe it will show you ads like every 15 minutes, or at least it used to. I'm not positive about that. And there are certain things that are not enabled. But most of the functionality is there, and with the ads, you can just close them. So it's somewhat annoying. They don't show all the time. They only show while you're running Visor. But I'm ignoring the pro version because I'm not going to pay for it. Uh, you've plugged your device into Wi-Fi, you've installed ADB drivers, you've installed Visor, you've turned on USB debugging inside the developer options, click play, and here's what you get. And this is um, just straight up, this is the whole device. So you can see that the resolution on here isn't great at the moment. Let me turn it sideways. We'll see if it gets any better. Yeah, so the resolution still isn't good, but you can get more on the screen if you go into landscape mode. And then basically you're using the Android tablet, um, but you're viewing it through your computer, and that's all it really is. And then you can do the same things that you would normally do, um, but you're doing it with your mouse and keyboard rather than having to do it with a touchscreen. You can also do it with a touchscreen without clicking the mouse, either or. So yes, the downside is that USB doesn't carry, in this case, a 1900 by 1200 screen very well, but the plus side is you are able to, well, for instance, you can do things like recording the screen without having to use something like AnyDesk, which I've used before, which works well. One of the other nice things about this is the fact that um, if, for instance, your touch screen dies, your device, uh, the screen breaks, you can possibly, anyways, plug it in and be able to use it from there. Now I should note that after you've installed the drivers and you plug it in for the first time, definitely, and it might do this every time, it will ask you on the device screen if you want to enable USB debugging mode for this computer. And I think you can set it to always allow it. So uh, I've, I've actually had this happen before where I've done it with any desk and with visor, where I had a screen that I could see, but the touchscreen portion didn't work. This was on a phone. And so, and I already had visor installed. So uh, I plugged it into the computer and I was able to control it from here. And luckily for that device, I wasn't, it, it's an old Samsung Note 3 or something like that. Uh, I wasn't about to go out and pay money for a new screen. The battery was all puffed up. It was. It was still functional, but just had too many things that would have needed to be repaired or replaced. I think the SIM card slot was also broken. But what I was able to do was to install IP webcam and use it as a webcam uh, that I could just set somewhere, keep it plugged in all the time. And I was able to control it when I needed to by plugging it in and using visor because it gave me the whole screen even though I couldn't use the touch screen. And again, for something where uh, the visible screen is broken, you can still see it from here. And, and it may be just enough that it enables you to like, you know, copy all of your files, all of your photos or whatever to Drive or to, um, you know, OneDrive or, or um, whatever service you prefer to use. Uh, it may be something where you can plug in a, an SD card and copy your things to an SD card so that even though your phone has died, you've got a sort of recovery, a sort of a backup plan without having to go out and spend the money to replace the screen on what might be uh, an otherwise uh, you know a device that you're not going to use like which was the case with mine so uh, it's an awesome little program it's basically free again I think I'll get ads every 15 minutes or so but I haven't seen it yet since I've used it here uh, I used it on Linux previously and it was doing that so I don't know we'll see but, um, you know, it's just nice because I can access this and do whatever I need to do here um, without, without having to have the device right here in my hands. So it can help you to consolidate your screens. So anyways, um, that's all just a short thing. 
Uh, this is an awesome program. I could probably play with the text sizing and get it to look good if I was really worried about it, but I kind of like it just the way it is. It's good enough. Um, and part of it is that my TV, my monitor is crap too. So if the monitor were better, it'd probably look a little bit better. Anyways, I hope this helps somebody. Um, yeah. If you have questions, you can write them in the comments. And if I have answers, I'll try to answer it. Um, but probably the Visor website will have more answers for you than I would have anyways. So, um, yeah, enjoy.